Peas, beans, and clover are among the 18,000 species in the pea family. Most species in this family, including these three, are known as nitrogen fixers. They increase the level of nitrogen in the soil, which plants need to produce protein so they can grow, and chlorophyll so they can photosynthesize. One way to use this in the garden is to interplant nitrogen fixers with other plants that need a lot of nitrogen. Or you could plant a nitrogen fixing cover crop like clover for fertile soil next year. Okay, this can be useful, but doesn't nitrogen fertilizer do the same thing but more conveniently? Why bother with this nitrogen fixation thing? Understanding this requires us to understand how nitrogen fixation works, which in turn requires us to understand the broader nitrogen cycle. So let's start with the big picture. Nitrogen makes up 78% of the Earth's atmosphere by volume. But most of this nitrogen takes the form of two nitrogen atoms strongly bonded together, which isn't very reactive and is useless to plants. For it to become plant available, we need the help of bacteria. Various species of bacteria eat atmospheric nitrogen and poop out ammonium. This gets eaten by other kinds of bacteria, which poop out nitrite, which gets eaten by yet another kind of bacteria, which poops out nitrate. All of these forms of nitrogen are available for plants, especially nitrate, which is the easiest for plants to use. Plants can take this up directly if it is near their roots, but they most often rely on strands of fungi that attach to their roots and bring nutrients to them in exchange for the sugars and carbohydrates the plant roots exude. Dead plant material is also rich in nitrogen and gets brought down with the help of worms, whose poop is a delicacy among nitrifying bacteria. Some of the ways nitrogen exits the soil is when the crop is harvested, when water carries it away, or when it becomes gaseous and returns to the atmosphere. Or if the soil lacks oxygen, different anaerobic bacteria grow, which convert nitrates back into atmospheric nitrogen. Notice that these things only happen with loose nitrogen in the soil, not with nitrogen inside organisms. Okay, so we know that the nitrogen cycle depends heavily on life in the soil. Without them, the plants would be quite sad. But you may have noticed, if the fixation process is done by bacteria, where do nitrogen-fixing plants fit into this? Believe it or not, nitrogen-fixing plants don't fix nitrogen. Rather, they create habitat for the bacteria that do. The roots of this clover plant have little nodules that house huge amounts of nitrogen-fixing bacteria. The ammonium that these bacteria create slowly releases into the soil for neighboring plants and microorganisms to use. When the plant dies, the bacteria disperse into the soil, resulting in an abundance of bacterial allies for future plants' nitrogen needs. You know how earlier I said that water can carry soil nitrogen away? This nitrogen ends up in rivers, which can disrupt the ecosystem by enabling algae to dominate. But remember, this only happens to loose nitrogen in the soil, and not to nitrogen embedded in organisms. And fertilizer adds pure nitrogen without the organisms. So when it rains, huge amounts of it run off and pollute the water. Loose nitrogen molecules are also much more prone to volatilization, releasing huge amounts of nitrous oxide, a potent greenhouse gas, into the atmosphere. But that's not all. Such quantities of pure nitrogen irritate earthworms, which end up dying or leaving. It disrupts the helpful fungus on plant roots and changes the soil pH, making it inhospitable to bacteria. In short, it kills the soil. When the nitrogen all gets used up or washes away, the organisms aren't there to help the plants get more. So now you have to add more fertilizer, which worsens the problem. And these organisms did much more than just supply nitrogen. The root fungi also brought up important minerals for the plants. And now that they're gone, mineral fertilizer must also be used. Instead of working with this self-sustaining web of organisms freely sharing nutrients, we have to spend more money to add loads of fertilizer to dead soil, poisoning the water and contributing to climate change. Considering the inability of dead soil to supply plants with nutrients, it's no wonder that throughout the last century, vegetables have been steadily declining in nutritional value. Healthy food requires healthy soil. So if the soil around you is rich and alive, try to keep it that way. But if, like most of us, the soil around you is dead or dying, nitrogen fixers can help to add a little more life so that someday our tiny allies under our feet will come back. Crop Booster powered by Kiminasi technology, can best be explained by comparing it to a now obsolete technology, the compact disc. 
A CD is plastic, and you can record any kind of data onto it. Writing data to the disk requires equipment and electricity, but a machine can read the data at any time, so it can be used to play music or movies, or install software to transfer files. The Kimonasi disk KD, works almost the same way. Information is stored on a mini metal disk, but it's not read by a machine. Instead, it is read by the electromagnetic wave created by flowing water that passes through the metal pipe, containing the Kimonasi disk, bringing that information, which we call signals, to the plants and soil being irrigated. Now, that may sound strange, but scientists around the world have found that water can actually store information from electromagnetic waves and pass it on. So what is this information that's being passed on? The Kimonasi disk contains more than 3,000 signals directly related to plant physiology, soil and water. When the water is absorbed by the plants, the data immediately begins to assist the plant, like a personal trainer, to achieve maximum genetic potential. This is the beginning of the process of organically managed genetics, which we call OMG, the complete opposite of GMO, since it enhances the plant's natural genetic capabilities. Fulvio Balmelli, the inventor of the Kimonasi plants technology and the Kimonasi disc, was the winner of the ISDRA International Science, Technology and Research Awards 2024 Best Researcher Award in the field of non-chemical agricultural biotechnology and a Nobel Peace Prize nominee. The Kimonasi technology used in the Crop Booster Kimonasi disc has been recognized as an entirely new body of knowledge. And the results have been astounding. So what does use of the Crop Booster Kimonasi disc look like in practice? Firstly, a farmer will get a module that can attach to any type of irrigation system in the world. The Kimonasi disc is inserted into the module, the irrigation turned on, and the water flowing past the disc gets programmed. This programmed water reaches the field sand gets absorbed by the plants. The first change is that the plant can absorb more sunlight. This increases photosynthesis, which is how plants use energy from the sun to create their own food. It's the key to everything, and here's how. Photosynthesis requires water. So one positive change is that, with the increased photosynthesis, the plant's water management abilities also improve, making it better able to balance its water intake and transpiration to maintain optimal growth and function. This also often reduces the amount of water needed by the plant, an important factor considering the impending water scarcity worldwide. Also, through the enhanced photosynthesis, the plant will produce more sugars and store that excess energy by expanding its root system. This excess sugar will be fed to the soil microbes, which play key roles in providing other nutrients to the soil. For instance, some will pull nitrogen from the atmosphere and convert it into plant-usable ammonium, nitrite, or nitrate, in a process known as nitrogen fixation, since it fixes the nitrogen into the soil. And as the plant grows stronger, it is more resistant to disease because it has more sugar to grow and defend itself. When a plant's BRIX level is 5 or below, it is susceptible to attack by many pests and diseases. In the 5 to 8 range, another category of pests and diseases may appear. But in the 8 to 12 range, they become far less susceptible to pests and diseases. And once the BRICS level reaches 12 or higher, all pest and disease problems disappear. Since crop booster plants tend to have increased levels of sugar, it makes sense why they consistently show less pest and disease pressure in our scientific studies. But another advantage of this increased photosynthesis is that it pulls more carbon dioxide out of the air and deposits it in the soil. This is called carbon sequestration. Then, through a chemical process, oxygen, literally the breath of life, is created and released into the atmosphere. Nitrogen fixation and carbon sequestering are two of the most important processes we need to restore soil, control climate change, and provide a healthy and livable atmosphere for humans. By sequestering more carbon into the soil, reducing greenhouse gas emissions through nitrogen fixation, and providing a system to eliminate synthetic and chemical fertilizers and pesticides, while replacing them with natural and organic fertilizers, pesticides, biostimulants and compost, 
This new agricultural technology creates the most sustainable, scalable farming practice there is internationally. The Crop Booster, powered by Kimanasi technology, pays for itself, is easy to install, works on any crop, works with any type of irrigation, produces better quality crops, has been proven by unpaid independent scientists, is completely food safe, provides better shelf life, while saving water, and increasing the value of your farm. Welcome to the future of agriculture, and join us as we create a healthier, more sustainable, and profitable future for everyone. Let's make the world healthier again.